Hello and welcome to this tutorial on configuring switch interfaces. We're going to talk about some of the basic configurations that you'll come across all the time and we'll also take a look at a few commands that enable you to determine not only how a switch interface is configured but also how it's actually operating based on that configuration. So let's start with two terms and if you look at the front of a switch you'll see a bank of ports and so that's the first term port and that refers to this physical connection here in the front of the switch when you're at a command line and you're talking about configurations of ports we use the term interface so don't be confused really an interface refers to a port and it just determines the configurations that control that port that tell that port how to act how to function okay so there are many different types of ports. Since we're looking at switches, we're going to uh, only focus on Ethernet interfaces at this time. And But keep in mind, when you talk about port configuration, you could talk about many different types of ports, especially when you talk about routers, many different types of interfaces on routers compared to switches. So we're focusing here on Ethernet ports on switches. We'll take a look at the show interface status command and take a look at all the good information we learned from that command. And then we'll look at our three configurations. We're going to talk about configuring duplex on a switch port. We're going to talk about setting the speed of that port. And we're also going to talk about putting a description on that port. Finally, if you have a lot of ports to configure, it could be a real time-consuming process to do each one individually. So there's a way to enable you to configure a range or multiple ports at the same time. And that comes in very useful when you have a lot of work to do. So let's get started. We're at a switch command line here. And let's go ahead and start by looking at our interfaces and how they're functioning and how they're configured. So we have two options. The first one is we can just type show run to take a look at the running configuration and that will output the entire running configuration and we can look at the interfaces and see the default configuration which is what we have here. You can see they pretty much there isn't much there. Well that's okay but there's another command that gives us more information and more useful information. So let's take a look at that. That's called the show interface status command and when we enter that we can see on the left hand side I'll scroll up you can see we have every port listed on this switch so 1 through 24 are fast Ethernet and then there are two gigabit ports 1 and 2 let's take a look here because there's some really good information we can use first we can see the name and for most of these there there's nothing there. It's empty. By default, there's no name. And the name refers to the description configuration command of an interface. So we'll get to that in a minute, but by default, there are no descriptions configured. If you, if and when you do configure a interface description, this is where you would see it. So you can see FA02 has my PC as the interface description and it shows up as the name. The status shows you whether or not the port is up or not. So you can see most of these are not connected. However, FA14 is connected. You can see the default configuration for the VLAN is 1. And then we look at duplex and speed. So these are what we're really interested in here. This will tell you how an interface is configured and how it's functioning. So by default, duplex and speed for switch interfaces are configured to auto-negotiate. And so you can see most of these here are set to auto. However, let's take a look at some exceptions. FA01, duplex full speed 100. If you see something like this, or if you look at FA03, duplex half speed 10. Since these are different than auto, you automatically should know that these have been configured to specific values. So they are different than the defaults of auto auto. So FA01, full 100, somebody went into that interface and configured full duplex and speed 100. And we'll look in a minute on how to do that. However, if you go down to FA014, you can see it's a little bit different. A full and A100. Well, when you see something like that, when you see the A in a hyphen in either column, that's telling you two things. It's telling you first that these this particular interface was left on the default configuration for duplex and speed which again is auto negotiate and auto negotiate is simply the switch and the connected device determining a value that both can support here 
it was left to auto, and then the switch is actually telling us what the negotiation result was. So what did both devices determine they could support? So for FA14, we have auto full and auto 100. That's telling me that the switch and the connected device, which here is just the PC, auto negotiated to full duplex and to 100 megabits per second for the speed. So that's pretty useful. On the top, you have a hard configuration. Sometimes you hear the term, you know, hard set it to full 100 or half 10. Well, that's good, but if that port were connected, here it's only telling you what it was configured, not actually how it's functioning. Whereas on FA14, it's telling you not only it was left in the auto configuration, but it's telling you what it auto negotiated to. So the difference is on FA01, you may have configured it to full 100, but the connected device is not configured to that. So it's not actually telling you how it's functioning, it's telling you how it's configured. Whereas on FA14, it's actually telling you both how it's configured and how it's functioning. If you don't want to look at all the ports, you're just interested in one, a different command you could type is show interface, and let's choose one, FA011, and just type the word status after that. It'll give you the same information we were just looking at, but it only gives it for one particular interface that you're interested in. So you've got two options there, you look at everything or look at one in particular. Okay, let's make some configuration changes. And we have a scenario. Let's say we need to connect a server to the switch, and the switch needs to support the server for 100 megabits per second, and we want full duplex. And we want to make sure that the switch port always functions at that particular speed, and we don't want to use auto negotiation. So we need to hard set it. So let's go ahead and jump into configuration mode, and we'll go to FA017. And let's start with speed. And I'll question mark that to show you the available parameters. And you can see we have 10 megabits per second, 100 megabits per second, and the default of auto. Keep in mind, if you choose 10 or 100, you're committing to only supporting that particular speed. So if you choose 10, you're only going to support 10. If you choose 100, you only support 100. Let's go ahead and take 100. And now we have a duplex requirement for this particular scenario. So let's take a look at the duplex command and check out the available parameters there. And again, you see the auto is available. Um, that's the default. And then you have full duplex and half duplex. And if you haven't yet checked out the tutorial on duplex, take a look at that to determine uh, the differences of those two particular settings. Here we need to go with full duplex. And keep in mind, just with the same as speed, if you choose one, you're forcing it to um, function that way. So if you choose full duplex, you only get full duplex out of that port. If you choose half, it's going to be committed to functioning as a half duplex port. Let's go ahead and hit enter. And then finally, let's go ahead and put a description on there. And there are many ways to determine what device is connected to a switch port, but one of the easiest and fastest ones is using an interface description. And oftentimes in production environments, a device name that is connected to the switch is put in the description. You can put a lot of other additional information in, in that description as well, but at least the name. So when you look at uh, your connected ports, you can tell quickly where a particular server or where a particular PC is connected. So here, let's just call this my server. And we'll jump out of configuration mode now. And let's take a look at port 17 status now. And here we go. So we have a name. The description is my server. It's not connected, and it's still in VLAN 1. We never changed that information. But the duplex and the speed are no longer set to auto. They're hard set to full 100. And that's exactly what we wanted. Let's look at one other option we have in when it comes to configuring interfaces, and that's the range command. Let's say you have now five or six or more servers you need to connect, or user PCs, and you, you know that they all have the same interface configurations, but you just don't want to do each one individually, because it's going to take a lot more time. So you have an option, and that's using a range. So I'll show you how that's done. You go back into configuration mode, and let's say we want to configure ports 18 through 21. So we start off by interface, but instead of saying fast ethernet, and then a particular number, we use the word range. And then we go ahead 
and go ahead and choose our type of interface. You can see what we have available to us here. So here we want to choose Fast Ethernet 18, and we're specifying a consecutive range. So if we question mark here, you can see we have a comma and a hyphen. The hyphen is used to specify a range of consecutive ports. And when you specify the end of your range, so let's say here it's port 21, you only put that. You don't have to put the zero slash again. And if we were to hit enter, you could see now the command prompt tells us we're in interface sub mode in configuration, but it says range as well. Whereas before, I'll scroll up, you can see it just said config if, so we're in interface uh, configuration mode. But here it's just telling us, it's reminding us we're in a range. We can go ahead and type description and we'll just call this range and jump out of that. And let me show you the comma range approach as well because it's a little bit different actually. Here we'll choose interface range and we'll begin here with FA22. And in, when you use the comma, you use the comma in order to specify ports, a number of ports, but they all don't, they don't have to be consecutive ports. So when we went from 18 through 21, we got all the ports in that range. Here, let's say we only want to do 22 and 24. So we can choose individual ports and we want to do, but we want to do them all at the same time. Note the syntax is a little bit different when you use the comma. Every port needs to be specified with the type of port it is. So fast ethernet and then the full number 024. If we hit enter there, then we can go ahead and enter our description and let's just call them individual. We'll go ahead and jump out, and if we take a look at all of our interfaces now, we can see on FA17 we have our server we configured, and then 18 through 21, we did all of those, a range, a consecutive range, and then you see 22 and 24, we configured those at the same time, um, but we chose ports that were not in a consecutive order. Finally, we looked earlier at the show running config when we had just the default configurations on the switch. Let's go ahead and look at that again now that we have a few more of the uh, interface commands configured. And here we can see, let's look at interface fast ethernet 02. This is what the running configuration looks like after we've specified some of the interface configuration commands. So we have a description, we have the duplex, and we have the speed. If we look at some of the other interfaces that we did not touch, we can see they just say no IP in, no IP address, but they don't say duplex auto, uh, speed auto. That's because a lot of default configurations do not actually come up in the running configuration or the start configuration. It's just implied something you have to know. So if you don't see it, you have to know what the default is and assume the default is what's being used. If you do see, do see something specifically configured, then of course you know to go by that. Okay? Okay, so to summarize everything we covered, we took a look at the show interface status command to see a port description and also to see how it's configured and also if it's left in the auto negotiation configuration to see actually what it negotiated to with the connected device. And then we also took a look at how to look at that information but just for one particular interface if that's all you're interested in. We went ahead and we made some duplex speed and description interface configuration changes. And we also took a look at configuring ranges of interfaces, not only a consecutive range, but then individual ports that are not consecutively ordered on the switch. And that's it. That is the tutorial on interface switch configuration. Thanks for watching.